We promised you guys a Godzilla minus one review because I've been battling this mystery illness. I did not get to see it, but Russell did. So this is Russell... why, this is why Keaton really can't travel. Like you can't even rely on this guy to go to a movie. I'm sick. I wasn't going to go to a movie. I, Hold I on. Let me knock got, out a couple. I of know these you got first. sick, but look, you're right. You're right. When Keaton first told me he has no desire to travel, he has no interest in traveling. I was like, what's wrong with this guy? Then he goes to Connecticut. And he comes back with a face like a like a freaking watermelon. I look like the inbred guy in the Midsommar. That was the yeah. yeah. He, he did. Yeah. He did. He looked. He looked like he walked out of the cast of Deliverance. Yeah. And I said, I said, yeah. I he must have some karmic thing, you know. In his past life, he was he was some marauding Hun who would just go, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, travel around and sack villages. And now he can't travel. That's no. his karma. He can't go anywhere now. Exactly. Um, so I did go see Godzilla minus one, unlike my esteemed colleague here with the cold. Um, it was good. It was good. I haven't seen a Japanese made Godzilla movie probably since I was a child. See, th this is American chauvinism. Um, and it's also just what we have access to. It never even occurred to me that they still make those. But oh, the yeah, same they come out company the that's been making Godzilla movies since 1956 is still cranking out these Godzilla movies. They just, for whatever reason, they did import them when I was a child. That's why I, I, everyone saw, I mean, if you're my generation, you saw those movies, Godzilla versus the Smog Monster, Godzilla versus Kong, all of these movies. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't even know they still make them because they stopped importing them for whatever reason. Or if they do, it's they really have a very small release. Um, so this is the first one to really get attention in the West. Uh, from my knowledge, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think since like the 70s. Uh, yeah, very long anybody time. Really... Since a Japanese, since one of the Toho movies made it over here and made such right. a big splash. Yeah, and made a splash like that. Um, so yes, it was good. It was very interesting because the setting of post-war Japan was very integral to the whole plot and the idea. So just quickly, this, this, the protagonist is a failed kamikaze pilot. He's a kamikaze pilot who chickened out and he's tortured and tormented by not having done his duty. Um, so after the war, he uh, winds up uh, helping a, a woman who's a refugee of the war who herself has taken it upon herself to take care of an orphaned baby. So the three of them make this kind of traumatized, shaky family unit. Um, but in the war, he had encountered Godzilla. And this is something else he's tortured by. Instead of shooting his gun to rescue the other men, he ran on top of not having done his duty as a kamikaze. So when Godzilla comes, and now this is a post-Bikini Atoll atomic experiment Godzilla. So Godzilla has been irradiated. He has like Wolverine-like abilities to regenerate. He has radioactive breath. Um, so when this... Uh, radioactive Godzilla comes to attack Japan, he uh, sees it as an opportunity to recover his lost honor. Uh, so that's basically your plot. Um, it's really interesting, especially that trauma of post-war Japan, because we all know about Hiroshima. We don't think about what it would have been like in places that just got firebombed, right? right so, so it's very much people living in the aftermath of that and the and the movie takes place over the course of about two years so you see the gradual rebuilding of uh of the area it gets more and more civilized as time goes on um well that's why even the original godzilla has a sort of tragic undertone as opposed to king kong which is a great american myth right right there's a right. certain bravado about king kong there's a certain celebratory spectacle about king kong it was beauty that killed the beast exactly godzilla is much different it, it, it's it's much more somber at its core yeah uh, because the first one came out in 1954 that exact same environment obviously right uh yeah there's definitely a somberness to this movie i yes it was good for what it was um i think as i mentioned uh, the other day when this came up 
I think it's made such a big splash because Hollywood sucks so badly at this point. Everything coming out of Hollywood is so god awful and people want to be entertained. I think this hit the way that it did because it's entertaining. It's like, oh, look, here's a movie that's not embroiled in our culture wars because it's not coming from our culture. And it's just a movie about people who are likable and you root for them and there's a clear goal and an obstacle and it just follows your traditional storytelling arc. And for $15 million, yeah, it looked pretty good. As far as I could see, they didn't really use a lot of CGI. Um, it was mostly practical effects and that always looks better. CGI still does not look real. It still does not look right. It still looks a little Pixar when they use right. CGI. Um, so yeah, for $15 million, it looked great. Um, I mean, it's kind of amazing they were able to even do it for that. Just looking at what they had to do with ships and military engagements. Um, you know, they used a little silly plot device on like why the, cause they, I guess they felt like they had to explain why the Americans at this time wouldn't have been involved militarily if Japan were getting attacked by a radioactive lizard. Um, you know, during the Marshall Plan era, like why the U.S. is not there. And their excuse really was kind of ridiculous, but you just forgive that. It was the Soviets were, were might trigger the Soviets if the Americans do military maneuvers in the region. Like it just it made absolutely no sense. Um, but that that would really be my only complaint. Please clap. <laughs> 